You're listening to Bizarre Buffet, a podcast of all-you-can-eat weird. I'm your host, Mark Toriello. I'm Jen Wilson. And I'm Mark Blustein. There'll be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all in private. When we first went in, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Hey everyone! Hey, Hi, Puna. so you are listening to three cam girls and a pussy goblin. Oh, I'm the pussy goblin. In case you didn't know, we were just talking about like just things that we could do in life. Yeah, that like would make us make some extra money. Yeah, yeah. cam Hook girl in. got brought up, but yeah. I would I would never do that. Yeah, I mean I would do that in theory. I would. Yeah, okay, so Mark and I would do that. So, um, patreon.com slash camgirl goblin. I will say this if you are into jock straps that press into your gut and create a guttural bulge, a guttural (laughs) bulge. What an offensive combination of words. I'm your man. If you're into goblin pussy, I'm your man. Goblin pussy. And if you're just into. I don't even know what. I'm your girl. Yeah, there you go. So we're all your girls is what we're trying to tell you. Three cam girls. Three cam girls gone wild. And we're like two, two girls, one cup. Yeah. And even though we Three are, girls, one podcast. Even though, we, <laughs> even though we are a podcast, we're doing this thing where we try to have video footage yeah, too. Yeah, we, we want you to see our Fuck beautiful yeah. faces. Yeah. And especially me because I have a lot of amazing clothes. Oh my goodness. For example, I'm wearing uh, older St. <laughs> Laurent by Anthony Vaccarello Runway. Yeah. And shirt. those are some Alexander McQueen's on your feet, right? I got some Alexander McQueen boots. Oh my god, she did. Oh, god so bless basically, her. I look like the Neiman Marcus sale rack. We love a sale rack. We love a good sale. We love <laughs> we do. a good dumpster dive. Uh, I'm we a dumpster love, dive. Uh, we love a good garbage picking. Yeah. We love things oh. for free. We love yeah. things from dead people. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we do here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I know, like, we were also talking earlier about how, as Mark's putting his hands up in the air and he would dance for the camera, I know we were talking earlier about how, like, the three of us are people who kind of will go past the limits just a bit. We'll test it just a bit, and it oh, always yeah. fucking backfires always. in our faces. Always and forever it does. My question tonight, then, is... How far would you be willing to take pushing a boundary? Mm. I mean, in I'm, what regards do you mean? Maybe killing someone? Oh. I mean, now I would, don't quote me on this. This is not on record. All of you don't listen to me. We if, never do. Well, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> common trend. I mean, exactly. It's, it's, I think. You're Andrew Cunanan. Yeah, I would Andrew Cunanan it if I would be guaranteed that I could get away with it. And Mark would be Alien Wornos. Oh as my long God. as you can give me the Versace shirts. Oh, absolutely. I pillaged the house before I it turned into a hotel. I love medallions. I love medallions. So, um, what about you, Mark? Uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, we're all... Mm, uh, I'm... I'm kind of against uh. murder, right? I mean, I guess I'm kind of against murder, but I also object. some people fucking have it coming and should yeah. be murdered. And so, Eileen Warner's picked them out. Well, yeah. So I'm like neutral when it comes down to murder. Unpopular opinion. Yeah. We have um, lots of those. We do. But, <laughs> that should be a segment. That should actually be. I was thinking about it. Our 50th episode, unpopular opinions. Un- I love that. 50 be- unpopular opinions. Let us know if you want to hear it. Let us know if you want to hear it. No, <laughs> Mark and I seem to have really shitty luck so with our luck if we tried to do anything slightly illegal we would get busted oh, me oh too. yeah me for, too. for we're, example we're all in the boat. case in point ready so you know for our podcast bizarre buffet i put together a series of flyers and i was posting them in these like obscure places so i went to like an abandoned restaurant and posted it right. on the door you know i went to a liquor store which has a built-in income from 
Mark and I at forty dollars yeah, a week. Really, forty dollars a week. We contribute to their services. Yeah, add that up monthly. That's yeah. math. That's money. Yeah. So lo and behold, I went to the back of their parking lot, and they have like a vinyl fence, and I slapped on a bizarre buffet flyer with paper and mm-hmm. tape onto their fence. Yeah. And I don't even think it was their fence. It was just in their back parking lot. So a week later, I go to purchase my vodka bottle. <laughs> And they were like, I know exactly which one. You, you know which got, one, yeah. the one that never opens. And exactly. the guy, yeah. and the guy was like, Oh, are you posting shit around here? And I knew what he meant. And I was like, Oh, well, <laughs> what's your definition of shit? <laughs> and he was like, You're posting flyers. And I was like, Okay, whatever. I'm busted. Believe this motherfucker. Yeah. So he was like, He was like, You can't do that. The owner said that if you do it again, we're going to press charges. And Listen I, you know what this. I said to him? I said, <laughs> Well, so you good. can tell the owner he can go fuck himself because it's just paper and tape. Chill yeah. out. And then I was like, And your fucking Svetka bottles don't open. Yeah. Yeah. End of story. Yes. They so, do not open. Yeah. So Svedka, don't even sponsor us because y'all make defective fucking bottles yeah, that I have to crack you, open. It, it you have me to off. get on the Tito's bandwagon. I mean, listen. Come on, you you gotta do Tito's. Tito's. Is too expensive. I can't it afford it. it. But listen, listen to this. <laughs> but what pisses me off, what pisses <laughs> what pisses me off is the fact that Literally, people will threaten to press charges on fucking me, who minds his own business. Does nothing. For putting up a fucking flyer. Yeah. You know what? I said the other day. Asshole. A good, hard rainfall will wash away that fucking flyer, you lousy prick. Exactly. So go fuck Uh, yourself. Go fuck yourself again. Fuck you and your sped goodbye. Fuck you, (laughs) cunt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. We're feeling angsty. We're feeling we are. Angry. We, like, and had I, some really intense conversations we and before. We, are, we yeah. had some heart-to-heart. Some, some really, like, heart-to-heart heart life co- conversations. Moments. Yeah, existential Jen, crises. Jen, I feel like your topic has a little angst to Oh, it, it sure does. I'm so pleased. It I love sure it. It sure does. So I want to talk to you about these two girls named <sighs> Holly Harvey. Okay. And Sandra Ketchum. Oh. Holly Ketchum and, and Sandra. Holly and Sandra. Okay. Like Ketchum, like gotta Ketchum catch and them all, like oh. Pokemon. Ash Ketchum. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Ash Ketchum. Ash Ketchum. Oh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Now I'm going to tell you, because we all know I love my cold case files, my yeah. true crime. When I can't sleep and I have really bad insomnia, <laughs> I put on our best friend Pluto TV. Oh, we love Pluto. And this was on one of the true crime channels. And I was like, ooh, I want to do like a little bit of a deep dive into this. I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, Holly Harvey. She occasionally, she stayed with her grandparents. Holly's mother, Carla. She was sent to prison on a drug conven- convention. Listen to me. <laughs> like, I cannot talk now, but conviction. Not a convention, not a drug convention, a drug conviction. It's the same month that she moved in with her grandparents, 15 years old, being raised by her grandparents. Mm. Her grandmother, Sarah, was 73 years old, and her grandfather, Carl, was 74. Okay, so sexy ages. Oh, yeah. Outwardly, like, Everything seemed normal. Everything seemed great. But apparently Holly, who was also apparently using drugs, Mm. was having difficulty in school. She was suffering miserably inside her grandparents' house. So she was going through all these angsty emotions and couldn't really express how she was feeling. And at the center of her troubles was her 16-year-old lesbian lover named Sandra Ketchum. Hey, girl. Oh, so, cried. yeah. There was a poem that was found that Holly wrote, and it described how depressed she'd been and how she constantly cried herself to sleep because her grandparents like ordered her to stop seeing Sandra hmm. and insisted she stopped using the drugs. And Holly's poem also contained the words, "All I want to do is kill." Oh, just like what every other you know, 15, 14, 15 year old writes in their. Yeah, I mean... I mean, uh, I Courtney, did every day. No, I'm just kidding. Courtney Love. <laughs> well, we always reference Courtney Love. Go we do. It. This is a Courtney Love podcast now. I feel like this person, realistically, could have been very much like a Courtney Love. I'm sure Courtney Love's diary as a child had many lyrics oh, of about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, live through this. So, live through this hole. So despite her grandparents' rules and saying, you know, you had to stop seeing Sandra, you had to stop doing drugs, on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2004, Holly snuck Sandra into the house so they could spend the night together. Cute. In, I guess, what Holly had in the basement as a makeshift bedroom. A makeshift bedroom? So was it all horny-like, like with straps and well, chains? we're going to get there. Oh, I can't wait. Mm. I'm loving I mean, this adventure, I mean, every 14, 15-year-old had that in their makeshift bedroom, I mean, right? I did. I don't know why you're judging me. So the following day... After they spent the night together, mm-hmm. the girls were arrested for murder and armed robbery what? of Carl and Sarah, which were... Wait, the next night? Was that the grand... No, the next morning. The next morning? She, so they were arrested for the murder of Holly's grandparents. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, what? So the grandparents were killed. So the police oh. officers... The police officers found a quickly written to-do list. Oh, God. That was scrawled on Holly's arm, okay? So no. it was written on Holly's this arm. This is made up. No, and it said, kill, keys, money, jewelry. What the fuck? Kill, keys, keys money, money, jewelry. So let's go into the uh, kill. We're going we're gonna to talk a little kill right now. Oh, I love it. I mean, honestly, if you need such a short to-do list, you really need to take some ginkgo Wait, biloba so, so the grandparents for memory. Is it safe to say that the grandparents were anti-gay? I would assume so. Yeah. Especially, like, mm. where they were located and where they resided down in... Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Well, Too bad. Corpse was. So sad. So, let's go on to the kill. <laughs> so, Holly and Sandra, they were down in the basement in her makeshift bedroom with maybe whips and chains. I don't know, Mark. We can find out. But in, if you want to envision whips and chains in this makeshift bedroom, you can go for it. In the chains. Okay, sorry. They were smoking marijuana laced with cocaine. Fucking hot. What did you say it was called again? It's called a woo banger. All right, well, we need a, a fact oh. checker in here. So if someone can like fact a what? check us. A woo banger? A woo oh, banger. I wouldn't know. I think there's another um, name for it, too. I don't know. But they were hanging out down there. They heard the grandparents approaching, and Sandra Ketchum quickly hid herself behind a bed. Oh, God. Okay. I guess better than going back in the closet. <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, my. That's a back good one. Back in the closet. Back in the closet where you pee pee. I can get away with it because I'm community. Community. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Jen's an ally. I am an ally. So they were, <laughs> the grandparents were alerted of the mm. smell, the odor of what was coming from the oh, makeshift. The, the weed. The makeshift bedroom in the basement. I still... Possibly whips and chains. We don't know, but we can, <laughs> you know. <laughs> when the grandparents confronted Holly, she suddenly pulled out a knife and began <laughs> repeatedly stabbing her grandmother in the chest. Holly! You fucking asshole! Well, her grandma was probably an asshole. Carl, which was Holly's grandfather, mm-hmm. he moved in to protect his wife. Holly then yelled out for her girlfriend's help. Okay. Sandra emerged from her hiding place, wielding a knife, and joined Holly in stabbing her grandmother to death. What the fuck, Mm. Holly? Carl tried to get to a phone, but the girls chased him down, finally killing him in the kitchen. Mm. And this was all the next fucking morning? Mm Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Carl Collier, which was Holly's grandfather, Mm. um, had at least a dozen stab wounds, where Sarah, her grandmother, suffered over 20 wounds. Oof. So let's get into the keys. Let's talk about these keys. So we killed, now we get the keys. Okay, all right. After they executed the grandparents, the girls decided to execute the rest of the plan. They were drenched in blood. They located the grandparents' car keys and stole their truck and drove away. Okay. Makes sense. So getaway car. Holly and Sandra, they decided to escape to the Georgia coast. And they stopped first at a friend's house to change clothes and shower. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that to your friend? Can we use your shower? We're covered (laughs) with blood. Yeah. I I mean, mean, even if Mark and I went to Jen's house and we were like, Jen, we need to use your shower. We're covered in blood. Jen would be like, um, 
Okay. <laughs> so the Feel Fayette co- County authorities, they tracked Sandra and Holly down through the night as they excitedly called friends from a cell phone. <laughs> About what? Saying, They're killing? Like, I've never seen it more cruel than this one. <laughs> Like, they were bragging. <laughs> what? I shouldn't be laughing. I'm sorry. What if I just dweebs? Oh. So, we've got the keys, right? So, we've fled the makeshift basement bedroom yeah. with possibly whips and chains, and now yeah. we're going to the Georgia coast. Okay. So, money, right? We've done the kill. We've done the keys. Now, the money. Money. Why Holly Harvey desired, designed, and carried out this brutal slaying of her grandparents is a question that we'll never have an answer there's no level of drug abuse or fit of rage that could account for it. But basically, it appears the two teenagers killed for money. Okay. So, Bruce Jordan, who worked for the Fayette County Sheriff's Department, offered reporters his opinion. And he said that Holly was emotionally distraught by the forced separation from her lover. Mm-hmm. He also commented that she wished for everyone to suffer the same way she suffered. I love that. Cool. Sandra Ketchum's reason for going along with all of this is also unclear, but it was stated that I believe the evidence at trial will be that the motive was to gain freedom and be able to stay together forever. That's beautiful. Aww. Well, let me say this. That's if anyone tried story. to get in between Mark and I... We would kill them. We would both kill them. And guess what? We've done enough research to know what the do's and don'ts are. So yeah, mind your mind, mind your business. I grew up in the hood. He did. And so did I, but in South Jersey. Actually, no, we really More did. trees. We actually, so yeah. we've done the killing. <laughs> we've taken the keys. Yeah. We've got the money. You have the Oldsmobile. We've got the jewelry now. Yeah. Okay. We got all we need. The jewels. So the jewels. Jewelry. So on August 3rd, Holly and Sandra were located on Tibby Island. 25 police officers descended on the area. <laughs> wow. When they were arrested, they were at the home of two brothers that they just met. Oh. Holly had told the boys that she needed cash and wanted to sell off some jewelry. The jewelry, of course, belonged to Holly's grandmother that was stolen by Holly and Sandra. Do you think they ripped it off the corpse or what? I don't know. Mm. Um, But Bruce Jordan, he was, again, worked for the Fayette Police Department. He told reporters that Holly essentially just laughed at the amount of police attention that she was (laughs) <laughs> gained. Wow. Okay. He said that she was callous. She was cocky. She is the coldest, most heartless individual he'd ever interviewed. <laughs> um, it almost made her giddy to know that they brought so many people to arrest her. Like she actually got joy. Flattering. Yeah. I mean, it's very she, flattering. She was probably like, wow, my grandparents had it coming. All you came out here. Okay. Well, it's, so, I mean, like. It's awful. I'm n- sorry. No. Don't kill your grandparents. Okay. Don't K- do it. Kill them if they're fucking homophobic assholes. Yeah, that's I okay. Mean, that's but like, okay. don't like, go to jail for it. But I, like, don't kill people too. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jen's coming in for damage control. Exactly. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly a thousand mourners gathered for this funeral of the grandparents. How many? Nearly a thousand. Wow. I wonder how valuable that jewel Um, is. (laughs) The heart of the ocean. (laughs) It's been 84 years. Yeah. Been 84 it's, years. It's always 84 and years. And she finally stopped so being homophobic because she's I, dead. <laughs> that's so. how I feel when I wake up every morning. It's been 84 <laughs> years. So a thousand people came to support the homophobic grandparents. Yes. yes. Okay. That's okay. What, yes. So the community was very shocked and they were very disturbed by this very senseless slaughter. Yeah. And it quickly surfaced into the national press. Yeah. The defense lawyers for the girls argued before the Superior Court judge that bad publicity generated by graphic police reports have prevented them from getting a fair trial. Well, welcome to being, um, I don't know, uh, arrested for murder. Unfortunately, this is what transpires. Holly Harvey and Sandra Ketchum were charged as adults with armed robbery, plus two counts of felony murder and two counts of malice murder for the deaths 
of Carl and Sarah Collier. FD. Oh, FD. <laughs> it's a hefty charge. That's, that's a list. Okay. Can I ask a question Sure. Real quick? They were how old? 14, 15? They were like 14, 15 years old. So let's just say if the shoe was on the other foot, let's just say it was a white heterosexual couple. Okay. That was 14 and 15. Mm. Do you think that they would have been tried as adults or tried as I think it depends. Kitties? I mean, generally speaking... I would go to the controversial answer, which is I don't think they would be tried as adults. However, it it, it seems to vary like by country mm. for some reason. By state it, uh, or by state, by maybe. state well, or country? Well, no, but by by state, yes, but mm. also by country, probably. Yeah, because I know there's this terrible story about these two children who abducted a very small child in the An UK. An adult baby? And, oh, my God. I think we might have one on the hook. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I think we might have a diaper on the hook. Oh, my God. But I'm not going to divulge any of my diaper. So what happened with oh the... Oh, my God, Mark. I know. So, I mean... So tell me about these kids that... Well, I mean, long story short, because I don't want to take away from, from your story here, which is great, by the way. But Thank you. You're I know. welcome. <laughs> I'm loving this, and, I, like and I have sh- never heard about not it. Not like the shit show of the episode that no one will ever hear <laughs> about the royal family. <laughs> What's that? That's Patreon. Patreon content right there. We have some Patreon content headed your way. We all, um, um, we were all very lost. We were very um, lost. And that, that happens. I mean, like with these two kids in England, they abducted a very, very young, small child from mm-hmm. the shopping mall. And they brutally, and I mean, it's awful. Like I'm a sick person, but it made me even like cringe because okay. it was just so awful. But essentially, these kids abducted this kid and murdered him in a heinous, heinous fucking way. I think they, like, dismembered him yeah, on, like, like the, the train tracks. You know what's crazy? Yeah, I find that, like, kids. UK murderers are so fucking just ruthless oh, yeah. and fucking filthy. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. It's, like, some of the shit that you hear that goes down in the fucking UK, maybe because, like... Oh my god! Well, like, well, the, I mean, okay. the stabbing rate is higher than like the sh- like fucking but, shooting rate. I mean, but, but that, the things that, that people do, I don't know. But that makes sense. I mean, listen, we could do a so- whole like sociological examination of this. I'm sure. Well, the amount of sub podcasts that, we'll that be we doing. would have, exactly. yeah, yeah. So fund us on Patreon so we can do all of them. Trigger warning: They like shoved batteries inside of him. Yeah, a train oh ran him over. Stop. Yeah, yeah. and mind you, the um, it's, it's it, awful. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's fucking really horrendous. Like it was a story that truly made even me sick. And that says a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and these two kids essentially were put in a very easy kid jail and they were let out of prison very early on. They are both out of prison and are in a witness protection program. But the other one was a, grew up to be a real fuck up. Yeah. The one the who... The one was like a real yes, fuck up. The one who they essentially said was the pretty much the driving force behind the murder is the one who later in life had has, like habitual yeah he things. had he had made more offenses um also involving things with children like pornography yeah, and they should dismember him yeah as at, well. in the town square so it's funny that you bring this up just saying so, so funny that you bring this up because unless there was a plea bargain that was reached, they pretty much would face a maximum sentence of life in prison without parole. Mm. There you go. There you go. Right there. How fucked up. So, I mean, fucked up and not, you know what I'm saying. Holly's attorney said that the two will be tried separately because Sandra Ketchum gave statements to authorities that may be damaging to her client's case. So... Okay. Sandra's attorney... Blames the system. 
Yeah. As they all do, right? Yeah. It's always I mean, the system's uh, fault. Of course. Sometimes mm. it is, but not always. The evidence shows that a lot of people have failed Sandy. Oh, okay. A lot of people have failed me. I haven't killed anybody. Mm-hmm. Up until now, everybody, including the state, has failed fail this child. Oh, boo-hoo. Yeah, boo-fucking-hoo. Yeah, that doesn't make you okay to murder. When asked about this crazy to-do list Mm -hmm. on Holly's arm, (laughs) you know, the three bloody knives, the blood-stained clothes. Yeah, Mm. typical things. (laughs) Sandra Ketchum's attorney admitted that they have a very strong case. (laughs) Oh, well, that's already your lawyer sucks. Good luck. So, He's like, the prosecution has a good case against you, so let's let's try to do this, I guess. Eventually, Holly got her GED in prison. Okay, good job. Sandra Ketchum, if I'm not mistaken, is up for parole this year. Get it, girl. Get it. While Holly, her first opportunity is in 2024, so that's like, what, two, two years, years from now? now? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, God. Holly's attorney said that it's doubtful that they'll that they will be paroled on their first try, but she also said that the girls might get out when they are in their mid forties. Mm. If they get out, both girls will have spent more than half their life in prison, and they'll be exposed to a completely new world. Oh yeah, you know they won't know anything about computers, cell phones. And, you know, many people who, you know, get out have a tough time adjusting to the modern world. Like, what was his name from Party Monster? Oh, Oh, Michael Michael Alley. Yeah, Yeah. he had, like, a really rough time adjusting. Yeah, Yeah. but he was just, he was released not too long ago and now he's dead but yeah. anyway well, I spoke to you in email several times that'll be Patreon content that will force you but isn't you he dead? Pay. He's dead he's yeah dead but now. before he died <laughs> I'm not Teresa Caputo right. Long Island medium horror so my question for you is what do you think what do you think Sandra Ketchum's statements to authorities might be in regards to what like her trial, like her, her role in all of. I think she's going to. This was the this. girlfriend. This was the girlfriend. Okay, so the girlfriend of the girl who it was her grandparents, mm-hmm. right? I think she's going to be like. She was need mm-hmm. help her, and uh, you know, I'm an innocent person well, because you know, yeah. like what anyone else would probably do. Yeah, to I try to get she's salvation. Gonna, she's going to sell her well, girlfriend up the river you, yeah, for freedom. And, but if you yeah. see pictures of Sandra Ketchum, part of me feels like it was kind of like she was manipulated into a situation. Yeah. Which I think a lot of times when you're young, you're naive, you're, you know, apparently in love with the love of your life and yeah. you're going to be with them forever. It's like yeah. true love. And yeah. Listen, well, then I could tell you it's not fucking like that. No, so, it's not. We can all no, attest to that. We can all fucking attest to that shit. I can compare this to something and it's called folie adieu. It is the French term and it um, represents the madness of two. Something along those lines. And now it's normally one person has some kind of mental illness or something that is not quite right. Yes. And another uh, less dominant personality falls into line Mm. with Mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a very plausible situation. Yeah, more popular than you would think. Yeah, thank you. I think it's much more popular than you would think it is. So I forgot to mention this, and I remember this was like a big part of the story. They actually had to make sure that the blades were sharp enough and their aim was accurate, that they practiced stabbing the mattress of Holly's bed and a picture of apparently white puppies on the wall in the makeshift makeshift basement. We don't know if there's whips and chains, but possibly. (laughs) So this sounds like it was very premeditated because they had to practice for it. So it wasn't like a spur of the moment thing. No. Oh, I can be a lawyer. Yeah. So. Yes. We're here. Bizarre Buffet Law Firm. Hire us whenever you want to. Yeah. We're not licensed. I I love that. I completely forgot about that. But they're also, so these two girls were referred to as the real life Thelma and Louise. I love that. I would hope to have that moniker. That's really nice. So I also just wanted to share this, that 
I just thought this was funny because when I was doing my research, she expressed her misery in verse and they said they wrote a poem about her longing, right? Oh. And I fucking read it. And I'm like, this was not her poem. This was a fucking Ooh. verse from Tupac Shakur's Ooh, Changes. Stop. I kid you not. Stop it right now. Yes. it's. I wake up in the morning <laughs> and I ask myself, is life worth living or should I blast myself? And Oh. Oh. Wow. That's so she, um, she her was, personal writing was a quote. It, yeah, it was okay. not. It was not. It was a like, Tupac Shakur they quote. They thought it was like poetry, but I was like, no, this is a fucking Tupac Shakur verse. Oh my fucking God. Oh. Be kidding me with all this. Photo of the puppies, really? So I think, <sighs> honestly, what happened was these girls were young. They were naive. They were young and in love because at the end of the day, Holly Harvey said that she did this so the two of them could be together. Like the reason that they murdered the grandparents was so the two of them could live together. There's really not much about what that living situation was like with her grandparents. I think that there's probably a lot more to this story than... We know. I'm sure. I agree. Absolutely. In many cases, I think especially like these that are probably, I mean, there's knowledge of them clearly, but they are less publicized. So it's a lot easier for them to be like, you know, bring them to the station, boys, Mm -hmm. that type of deal. But who knows, like, what her living situation was like with her mother, especially in that area. And even that time, because this is the early 2000s. Correct. Like, yeah, it was the early 2000s. It was 2004. So, yeah. I mean, I think being an LGBTQ person in that area today is fucking difficult. Yeah. So, so then even even like, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago, 16 years ago, it was probably more challenging. It was. And I even like I, I you know, kind of reflect on being that age because I think in 2004 I was 14 years old Yeah, you know it's like you're a little angsty you're going through puberty you're not fully developed yet you're going through these different emotions and mm-hmm. dealing with different hormones yeah. my titties didn't know what they wanted to do I know mine too <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but you know I just remember I remember it not being easy. And I remember a lot of times feeling like the world was against me. Yeah, of course. You know, life wasn't fair and the way I was treated wasn't fair. And I thought it was only me. And I I look back now and I'm like, wow, I was a fucking idiot. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we all have those instances for sure where, you know, we can reflect upon something where we're like, oh, my God, really? Was I really doing that? Well, I remember like when I was in high school and. I was like the out gay kid in high school and no one really seemed to care, right. which was awesome, you know, yeah. cause most people would be like, Fuck it. but like, yeah. mo- everyone, like no one gave a fuck in my high school. No. And I guess for me, the biggest disappointment was one, the guys in my high school were that all people ugly. didn't give you a hard time. No, I love a pity party, <laughs> but no, like the guys in my high school, like none of them were my type or age bracket. And then the male teachers, they were not my type either. So I was yeah. really I know, alone. Right. The men it's, were it's just such it's, fucking disappointment. It's always so disappointing. No hot daddies. Or no hot guys. daddies. I had to wait till I was like 31 to <laughs> find Mine. Jerry, so Jerry. Sorry, Jerry. It was Jerry, so Jerry. disappointing. But yeah, yeah, this is beautiful. Is, this is the it's a love story. story of the real life Thelma and Louise. Yeah. I love this so much. I um, truly enjoyed it. I think it. it's a very romantic story. It There's is. a part of it that's kind of romantic, despite the fact that you know they stabbed a pillow and. White puppy dogs and I mean, quoted listen. Tupac Shakur, even yeah. though I was laughing when I watched this documentary on Pluto TV at like four or five o'clock in the morning, and they're like showing you fucking little like pictures from their journals, and I'm like, 
That is not their poetry. That is fucking that. like verses from <laughs> fucking Tupac fucking raps. Let me just say, I am so glad that you were inspired by this particular story that came on when you were half awake. I was half awake. This I, is like I love that well, this is a thing because this stuff inspires me. Well, what was the other one? There was another one that I was. Oh, Jenny Jones was the other one that I was. Jenny Jones. Jenny Jones. I was. It was like. Three, four o'clock in the morning, yeah. and I just put some true crime shit on on Netflix, and that was the first one that came up. I love it. So yeah, like listen, <sighs> a lot of my inspo comes when I have really bad insomnia and cannot sleep at night. Yeah. Well, I'm inspired, and I'm glad you were as well. I am. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're just gonna have to make me just be up and wired all night. <laughs> Forever, so I get eat, all of the inspo. Eat these coffee crafts. I can't wait to promote this episode, by the I way. I know. I'm jazzed. I, I am so excited. I'm I feel like this one, you know, we're a good time here at Bizarre Buffet. We are. Yeah, and and we, we would, bring you the goods. And we would love for you to subscribe to our Patreon. Oh my God, please. And now that the social media blackout is done, you can mm. come follow us on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Bizarre, right. Bizarre Buffet. Bizarre Buffet. And of course, like if you can't give us money, <laughs> send us your social social security number so we yeah, can like get a credit card get in a credit name. card in your name you can also just like and subscribe to us yeah on that's, that's Apple totally podcast fine. especially and just leave us a comment thank you like yes. comment that you love us that we they, are beautiful human yeah, beings that you want to see and our buttholes also just so you guys know a our comment bleached buttholes yes a a just com- bleached marks <laughs> bleached mark. a comment and a subscription will actually <laughs> do more for a podcast sometimes than, than money. a monetary yeah. donation yeah absolutely Absolutely. And you know we're kidding about the money, everyone. Yeah. I know. I mean, like, if you want to give it, that's cool. But honestly, what's more important is if you just literally go on iTunes, that will cost you nothing yeah. at all, except, like, half a minute. And guess what? The more followers we have and the money coming in, the better the content will be. So Absolutely. give us the yeah. help. Give us the money. Give help. us the help. Give yeah. us the money. We're asking for rats. your... Yeah. Give me money. I love that's your impersonation of Borat because I feel like that is the always impersonation of Borat. I am Borat. I am Borat. Very nice. How much? (laughs) So, So, um, anyway, until next time, my name is Lisa Kutrow. And I am the makeshift bedroom in the basement with possible whips and chains. Possible. That makes it really edgy. I love it. I love it so much. And I'm the Russian lesbian's tattoo. <laughs> oh, the girl with the dragon tattoo? No. Oh, it's fine. The Russian lesbian um, from the 2000s, early 2000s. Tattoo? Tattoo. All the things she said, all the things she said, run through my head, run through my head. Just, so you, just so y'all fucking know, I could sing two of their songs in, in Russian. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before Mark right, and Jen well, dance themselves into hell, let's say uh, a wonderful night. Hell, yeah, Satan. Hell, Satan. Hell, Satan. Um, hell, grandparents. Blessings in abundance to all. Absolutely. Um, and and love kill you. your homophobic parents. Yeah. Don't get arrested. Good night. Don't really do that. Good night. Don't do it. Bye. Bye. Bye.